section, we also got to work with several coalition partners on some legislation, especially looking at, you know, housing affordability and availability and increasing development. And so with that, we've worked for the past couple of sessions with the Home Builders Association and several other coalition partners on the stormwater and topsoil regulation and finally got that over the finish line this year. Yes, and with stormwater and topsoil, again, this was kind of something that was left to local jurisdictions and local municipalities as to what those topsoil and stormwater you know requirements would be on new construction what this legislation attempted to do was to create the standards so that all communities and all municipalities in the state would have that guideline on what is required at the base for stormwater and topsoil the legislation does not say that cities cannot do their own extra or added things that they feel might be necessary for development in their communities. But if they do take increased measures for topsoil requirements or stormwater requirements, they will also have to have some what we say quote unquote skin in the game. There will be a mechanism where the cities would also have to pay for some of that, um, the added cost. Because what we're seeing is the cost of new construction and development increases in many ways and this is just one facet where if it's very important for the community to have those additional measures that they also recognize that it's a benefit for the whole community and they also pay into that. Absolutely yes and we hope that this will really help to kind of minimize some of the barriers to development and help make housing really ultimately more affordable for the end consumer and so I think this is just a good first step and a good uh, bill that we passed with some coalition partners and yeah. looking forward to seeing the impacts it'll have across the state. Yeah, we were very happy to, to support you know our partners in this. So. Absolutely. Yeah. We also worked closely with the Iowa Apartment Association this past legislative session as they worked to revise kind of some rules and stipulations around property management for unlicensed individuals, but still working under the supervision of a broker. And so worked closely with them and their advocacy team to get some legislation passed on that front as well. Yes, and that basically focused around when we heard from them during the last interim, it was like, can we really not have our front desk folks take a rent check? Is that really what the intent of the law was? So we had very good conversations, like Greta said, where we're still trying to maintain the integrity yes. of property management. They still have to be licensed and all of that, but we do make some allowances for front office staff to, you know, take a rent check, get their deposit, and that type of thing. Uh, so we thought it was a very common sense approach to what's realistically happening in the property management you know, industry or this section of property management. Yep. And so this bill has already been signed by the governor and actually went into effect upon enactment. So this legislation is already in effect since it's been signed by the governor. So. And as with all of the legislative pieces, we look forward to your feedback. We encourage you to give myself or Greta a call just to let us know how it's working. Um, if things aren't working, obviously, we can always work to adjust. 